Right. Hello, Pin. Thank you so much for logging on. It's um, a very strange time at the moment, so I appreciate you all taking time out your evenings to sort of better your knowledge and, and improve your sort of investing ability. So let's make a start. Who am I? Well, I'm Edward from Chelton Brown. Um, Chelton Brown are a family run independent letting agent who covers uh, Northamptonshire. We look after around about 1500 properties in the area. Um, I myself am really passionate about finding new and sort of innovative ways to make sure that we're keeping ourselves up to date with new legislation and um, making sure we're ahead of the curve. So tonight, what, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to try and be like a good accountant and not an estate agent that talks about themselves. A good accountant should tell you what you can do, not what you can't do. So with this in mind, I'm going to go over a few of the key points from Isla's updates. Um, recently been on a couple of virtual courses similar to this, uh, most recently one hosted by David Cox, uh, who's head of Isla. So really informative chat. Um, hopefully I can impart some of that knowledge over to you. So the first question that most people have asked me is what about viewings and moving? Well, viewings are strictly a no-go. Um, that said, you can move people into properties if there is a necessity, but not if they just want to move for the heck of moving. Um, there's sort of three categories that form need to move circumstances. Firstly, is if they're putting their family in danger and they're an essential worker, perhaps a doctor or a nurse, for example. Secondly, when there's been domestic violence and there's a need to move. And thirdly, when there's been a threat to life. If there is none of those circumstances, the government advice is very much not to move. Now, we've been fairly proactive. Uh, before we went into lockdown, we got out to all our vacant properties and did video tours, which have gone really well. We've um, actually, in the last week, let four properties off the strength of video tours. What I would say is we haven't set a date for those tenants to move in just yet. So they're all lined up, ready to pass referencing, um, but we've said don't move until, until you're able to do so. Uh, second point is right to rent. So for those of you that don't know what a right to rent check is, it's sort of uh, an extra check that a letting agent or a landlord should do to make sure that someone has the correct permission to rent within the UK and reside in the UK. Um, this has been ever so slightly relaxed in the in the past you had to see a physical hard copy which you then took a copy of and stamped to say it was a verified original. You can now um, do FaceTime for example and they hold their passport up and you show that it's a likeness. That, that for me isn't really good enough and if, if something was to be flagged up I wouldn't like that as, um, as my sort of fallback. So we use a fantastic company called Credus. We use it for sales historically but we're now using it on the letting side. And what that does is it just verifies that they are who they are. It, um, they have to hold their passport up, touch their ear and touch the tip of their nose and various different things just so they know it all lines up. Um, lastly, on this little point is the um, serving of notices. So you can still serve notices. Uh, there are two ways to serve uh, notice for a tenant to leave. Firstly, a Section 8 and uh, secondly, a Section 21. So a Section 8 would be used um, for the likes of rent arrears. Um, Section 8 have various grounds that are split into two categories, mandatory and discretionary. If you were to serve notice for a tenant who has not paid rent for more than two months, that would be on a mandatory ground on a Section 8, which means you've got a fairly good chance of getting possession through the courts. Now, what I would say, and it's the same for Section 21s, um, the notice period is no longer two months, it's now three. You'd use a Section 21 when the tenancy had ended or it was on a uh, statutory periodic. Again, you need to serve three months rather than two months notice. Uh, another point to mention is Form 6A has been updated to make sure you're serving the correct form along with all the uh, relevant documents which include a health and rent, energy performance certificate and gas safety where there is one. Uh, last point actually which I've not mentioned on here is rent arrears. Uh, industry press has sort of indicated across the country that rent arrears are up by 2%, which is nowhere near as bad as I anticipate to start with. Um, what I would say at the start of the month, our arrears are up by sort of 5 to five to 7%, but by the end of the month, we managed to bring that down to around about 3%, which is more or less where we operate from. Um, as I said, the national average is up by 2%. So not as bad as we first anticipated, but as long as you're chasing tenants for rent and setting up payment plans, there's definitely uh, light at the end of the tunnel on that. So never like to leave PIN without giving something away, giving value to you lot. Uh, firstly is we offer a landlord checklist. I'm happy to send that to anyone that wants it. 
Um, I'm going to bring my contact details up in a sec, so make sure you grab a print screen, and I'm more than happy to send that over to you. Uh, secondly, more than happy to book in for a Zoom consultation, sit down, discuss your property needs, work out what we can do to help you and potentially uh, sort of hopefully help you with some of your property headaches. So that is me, Edward from Shelton Brown. Thank you ever so much. Hopefully we'll be back up and running in no time and um, be seeing all of you for a copy. Thanks very much.